Welcome to Zonk. I, 32 female, and my fiancé, 35 male, had one of those relationships where one partner loved more than the other. In my case, the former was my fiancé. Sometimes I felt suffocated by the excess love, other times I basked in it. Everyone, including strangers who spent at least five minutes in our company, envied me. I was not a head-turner, I just had subtle beauty that people could easily overlook. But I managed to charm my fiancé who was better looking and best suited for the front pages of fashion magazines. He also had a nice personality, he was respectful, easygoing, and could be playful and flirty when needed. I loved him, but one guy was never enough. I still had active accounts on single sites and apps where I regularly hunted for men. Don't get me wrong, I wasn't cheating on my fiancé. I had a nice plan, but I needed a perfect guy to execute it. One day, my fiancé found me perusing through one of the apps and asked me why I had it on my phone. I told him I was searching for a guy, but he laughed it off and asked me if I planned to discard him. I replied in the negative, so he told me to delete the app, that I didn't need it. I obliged, but that didn't mean I quit my search. After meeting so many guys that didn't match my criteria, I finally met this handsome guy on Tinder. We had a rendezvous at a hotel outside town. We spent the day and night together, and I liked him. The feeling was mutual. We kept on meeting to ascertain we were the perfect match. He knew I would soon be married and didn't mind. After some time, I told my fiancé I wanted to host a dinner and invite my new friend. He didn't mind that the friend was male. He was excited and even joined me to prepare dinner. My Tinder love came and my fiancé was the perfect host to him. When the time was right, I told my fiancé that I was in a relationship with my friend. At first, he laughed and told me to quit trying to prank him. He sobered up when I saw I wasn't joking. To my shock, he blew up and began to call me a cheater and other names. I tried to make him understand I wasn't cheating on him, I was only trying to bring in an addition. He asked me if I was no longer interested in getting married. That made me angry. Why would I lose interest? I told him I still wanted to get married to him, but I wanted an open marriage. That way, we would never get bored or think about divorce. I tried to make him understand that I would keep an exclusive partner and not sleep with just any guy. My friend even added that he was committed to making things work between us three. My fiancé went to the door, held it wild, and told me to leave. I thought he was joking until he practically dragged me outside. He went up, brought my bags and luggage down and threw them outside, then slammed the door in my face. I got tired of hitting the door and calling him to open it, so I followed my friend home but not before I threw away my engagement ring. I was so mad at him for treating me this way in front of a guest. I was over the relationship and resolved to tell everyone that we had broken up. I guess my now ex-fiancé spread the news faster than I would have done. It also seemed like he painted me black and made me seem like the devil. All through the week, I kept receiving calls and messages from our friends accusing me of cheating on him. Some even said I ruined the best thing that happened to me. I was mad at them all for not even trying to understand that I was not just doing this for my benefit but for his too. I tried to explain what had happened, but they wouldn't listen to me. They were supposed to be my friends. That was their loss anyway. I didn't even know why they were so concerned. It was my life, not theirs. I know what I want from life, and it's certainly not a close marriage. It's either an open marriage or nothing. Update. Finding another guy like my ex has been impossible. The Tinder guy I'm living with now treats me like a rag. He insults me at the drop of a hat. He told me to get a job and start feeding myself because he could no longer cater for me. He even said that I needed to start sharing the bills with him. Who does that? Through the years I cohabitated with my ex, he never told me that. I wish I could go back to him, but he has blocked me on all his phone and social media accounts. When I went to his house, I was told he had relocated. I don't know his present address, and all his friends have refused to disclose it to me. I just want to communicate with him. When he sees me or hears my voice, he'll ask me to come back. I just know it. Edit. 
Those who are calling me delusional don't understand the type of love I shared with my ex. We were more than soulmates. We were the essence of each other's being. Nobody who never experienced it would understand how deep such love is. Story 2 I know I'm an idiot and a horrible person, but I'm seeking some serious help here. Don't know who to talk to, so me and my boyfriend have been together for a year and a half. It was great in the beginning, but gradually I felt very taken for granted, used, misheard, and ignored. I feel like he's used me for rides, money, and sex lately. He always wants something. I wonder if he would love me if I didn't have material things to offer. I mention this because I believe that's why I strayed. We got in an argument about how I feel like he's only interested, for the sake of not getting too detailed, a certain kind of sex that I don't like and often hurts me. That I feel like I'm not good enough and he couldn't acknowledge that and placed blame on me. He shoved me to the ground, I freaked out and we decided to take a break from being with each other but be together. I felt like I needed someone to talk to and messaged a longtime guy friend, who nothing has ever happened before with, and he suggested we hang out to cheer me up. We got drinks and I decided I want to sleep with him, so I texted my boyfriend and said we should see other people. He didn't receive it until the next day and said since I didn't call him and talk with him personally first, I cheated on him. Which he's right. I do believe he's the love of my life and without him I have nobody left. I made a huge mistake and I was blank faced drunk and when reality hit me, I realized it was wrong. Anyway, he wants to be together until he decides whether or not he can forgive me. Then if he decides he can't, that's it. So right now, I don't know if we're supposed to talk, see each other, not talk. We lived with his family and they don't want me back. So I'm kind of at a loss as far as what's left of this relationship and how to handle it for the time being while he decides. I'm very surprised he's even been willing to talk to me. It sounds like you've been feeling neglected and taken for granted in your relationship. And that's a valid feeling. It's important to communicate your needs and boundaries to your partner. And it's not okay for them to push past those boundaries or ignore your needs. It's also not okay for your partner to physically harm you in any way, such as shoving you to the ground. Comments There's an entire big first part in your story, describing how awful your boyfriend is. And yet he's the love of your life? I guess you should feel guilty because you cheated. Yes, you screwed up. But from what you said, you should not be together with him anymore because of this big list of reasons you provided. You cheated, yes but that won't change his awful behavior. I think the bigger issue than cheating is that he wants you to submit to painful and uncomfortable sex. That's bullshit. Also a huge issue that he shoved you. That's domestic abuse. If he's shoving you now, he'll be slapping and hitting you next year or the year after. That's how it goes with guys like this. The violence increases in intensity and frequency. If you ever have kids, would you want them to think this is normal? Would you want them to be in a similar relationship? Of course not. Ditch this loser, find a nice guy that doesn't shove you, and doesn't care if the sex is painful as long as he's getting off. And when you find this guy, don't cheat on him. Story 3 Before people call me 25 female a hoe, I was really drunk and it was the first time something like this has ever happened, and I can assure it will never happen again. So basically, I went to a work function out of town for a panel. The man co-hosting the panel hit it off from the start. Our presentations and everything clicked and flowed in a way that kind of made me infatuated with him. Long story short, we end up getting drunk and having sex. After the panels were done, I go to boyfriend 25 male and I arrive at night and I didn't want to bring up the cheating at night because I was exhausted and not mentally prepared for the argument. Morning arrives and I sit him down and explain everything. Throughout me explaining, he doesn't even look phased and tells me, well, shit happens, and just moved on with his day. I'm actually so confused on what just happened here. There was no fight and he was just quick to act like nothing happened. My friend is telling me that there's a chance he could be cheating, but I don't want to believe in that possibility. Archived post. Comments. Two directions this can go. He doesn't care about you one bit, and he's probably cheating anyway. 
or he's in an emotional prison, distraught, hurt, angry, etc. And his defense mechanism kicks in and shuts down. Either way, it doesn't sound like you guys should be together. You definitely don't sound like you want a relationship. So you basically wanted an excuse for him to leave you and you cheated or what? Also, go screw yourself with the childish excuse I was drunk. You have 27, not 20. Alcohol is not like you've been drugged. You knew what you were doing and you knew you want it. Own it like the adult you are. If my girlfriend came with that poor excuse I was drunk, I would get furious. Look, you screwed up and fair play, you admitted it. Unfortunately, you don't get to decide how he feels about it. If you're hurt that you think he doesn't care, go ahead and be hurt. He may well be stewing over it and may blow up about it once he's had a chance to think about it. Or maybe he just doesn't care. Either way, he's the injured party here.